Mr. Speaker. I'm saying that the action plan isn't working. The government is on probation because it didn't meet its commitments. Billions of dollars had been set aside for infrastructure spending, but this money was not forthcoming. Can the Prime Minister guarantee Canadians that the funding promised in the budget for infrastructure projects will be delivered on time in 2009 and uh, that all of this money will be provided? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we've already indicated our intention to report to parliamentarians on the progress of infrastructure projects and other items in the budget. Position can't support an economic plan earlier in the week and two days later say it's not working yet. That doesn't really have a lot of credibility. Okay. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I can't help it if I'm an impatient man. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can the Prime Minister... Mr. Speaker, can the Prime Minister assure us, can the Prime Minister assure us that his infrastructure spending will benefit all Canadians, no matter where they live or who they vote for? Oh. Yeah, right. Well, uh, absolutely, Mr. Speaker. It's obviously the intention of the government through the budget uh, to ensure that all sectors and all communities, particularly those uh, hardest hit by the world economic slowdown are put uh, are put people are put to work and kept at work. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the uh, leader of the opposition's patience, he demonstrated a lot of patience in his long 36-year uh, return to Canada. I, I, I would urge him to show that kind of patience in the future. The honourable. Projects have been announced. And guess what? All seven are in Conservative riding. Oh, no. disgraceful. All they British Columbians deserve to have their well, infrastructure needs met. And when will this Prime Minister stop exploiting the financial crisis to build a giant Conservative pork barrel and start taking his job seriously for all Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Trans Last week they say that uh, not any projects have been funded. This week they say there's an orgy of spending going on, Mr. Speaker, but only in Conservative ridings, Mr. Speaker. I can tell the member opposite we're committed uh, to public transit in the greater Vancouver area, Mr. Speaker. I can say very directly, when you do look at British Columbia and you do look what the results of the people of British Columbia deliver on Election Day, it's no wonder so much of those results are going to Conservative ridings because there's an awful lot of them in B.C. Here, here. The Honourable Member... I have to ask, what can the minister possibly tell the Arctic Council countries at their upcoming meeting to credibly assert our sovereignty? Probably nothing. The Honourable uh, Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, we'll, we'll be glad to tell them for one thing why this, why this member is supporting the budget. And, the, and it's a good reason for it, Mr. Speaker, because of the many things that are in there for the North. Mr. Speaker, 80-some million dollars for uh, improving research facilities. Uh, oh. a further study on the permanent research facilities that are going to be there. Increased funding, Mr. Speaker, for the military in the North. Energy. More money for health care in the North. Yeah. Set aside, Mr. Speaker, for housing in the North. Oh. Mr. Speaker, we continue to put the North on the agenda like it's never been before. We look forward for this member's for su support on a very aggressive northern agenda. Hey, hey. Uh, 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 for in the back, well, thank you for that totally irrelevant answer. Great. It's too bad the Minister of Foreign Affairs can't say what he's going to say at the upcoming meeting. Right. They haven't put Wrong the same guy. resources into social, heritage, Wrong and large. search and rescue programs in the north as they have into military buildup. Canada's greatest strength in our claim to Arctic sovereignty is our northern Aboriginal and other peoples who make up Canada's right. history and development in the right. north. The Why meeting. doesn't the minister agree with northerners that all these are very important programs, are critical to a valid 
and strong Listen, Arctic Mark. sovereignty claim. Mr. Boy Larry, the uh, Honorable <laughs> Minister of Indian Affairs and Northern Development. Order. Order. Question, this allows me to continue. Mr. Speaker, we're continuing with increased regulation of transportation for, for uh, uh, boats traveling through the Arctic to make sure they meet our environmental standards. We're uh, continuing, Mr. Speaker, with an uh, election promise to develop a Northern Development Agency. We're renewing the SINED program, Mr. Speaker. We're continuing with devolution talks with Nunavut and, and uh, working with our Northwest uh, Territories. Mr. Speaker, we're, we have $36 million to improve the regulatory process on the McKenzie Valley Pipeline. Mr. Speaker, please, the third question. I need more time. Yeah.